The other day I was thinking that um, about 3D printing in terms of some of the exciting things that are going on with it. And I'm like, wow, am I going to actually be able to retire? And I did some sketching out, some ideas and a, a little bit of poor man's forecasting. And I, I was feeling really confident about it. And I just wanted to share it. So if you see me looking at my phone, it's I'm looking at a list that I'm going to share of the things that I wanted to cover really quickly. And the first thing I want to talk about is does 3D printing have the business size for you to be financially uh, free with doing that as a side hustle? Even if you were to be a reseller of 3D printers, if you hustled, you can get it done. So if you are passionate about this and you really work hard, I think that choosing any industry that you're going to be making a product and you can actually look at what's selling, look at what sporting events are coming up and understand you have a pulse on what's going on, you definitely can be financially free with doing that. So the next type of freedom that I wanted to talk about is location freedom. And that has to do with the next freedom too. Location freedom is your ability to travel anywhere. Does 3D printing offer something that will give you location freedom, the ability to go to different like countries and still turn deliver products. And there's several ways you can do that. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit with drop shipping, but you can also do a poor man's drop shipping version of that. So for fulfillment freedom, you are gone. You are having location freedom and you want to be able to fulfill a product. The poor man's version would be have some friends or family or a neighbor that you have everything prepackaged. All you have to do is get them a label, obviously give them something to return. It may be some coasters from that place that you're traveling, or maybe you swap someone out. Maybe there's another 3D printer in the area that they can fulfill your items, and then you can fulfill theirs, or you just give them a percentage. But the key is you have to have it already printed and in a Pacific box or shipping box. Like I use a lot of four by two by six boxes for to print all of my objects that I sell. So the fact is, is that you can have fulfillment freedom. The other way that I'm going to talk about a little bit later is actually using a drop shipping company. Drop shipping is actually sending a hundred of your different models or going ahead and having someone print on demand. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So the most important thing you want to do is when you're in retirement, there's this fine line between what's a hobby and what's retirement. Like if you want to have a little bit of extra cash since things are more expensive. The thing is you have to find products that you're passionate about. If you like camping or if you like skiing or skateboard, like whatever, I don't know if you're going to be skateboarding. You shouldn't skateboard, you know, too late. You're going to break a collarbone. But let's say that you're into a particular thing. Then you need to find um, that particular passion within it. For instance, if you were a pilot or no pilots, you could make stickers or something, products around or 3D printed emblems with aviation in mind, but you are passionate about it, you like it, and there's a reason, there's a story behind it. That's important. The next thing is you got to buy reliable equipment. So buying a 3D printer that actually is reliable and works. Now you're going to need some basic construction or some basic handyman in you because it's a piece of technology. So if you're not comfortable with certain things, then you need to get used to that. And there's also a little bit of software. Let's talk about the printer. So really quickly, I, I use Prusa printers because they're reliable, but I also recently just switched completely over to Wi-Fi and I use an app that's called Prusa Connect and it goes right over and it's smooth. If you find yourself like finding that that's cumbersome, then you really need to come up with a way or a short cut for that because, hey, it's 2000, whatever. It's technologies here. So why not use it? OK, then 3D model model licensing. So instead of you thinking, oh, I got to come up with a product, you can find a product that already exists and you can print it on demand something that you're passionate about and offer that person a fee to license their model. The next thing is, what are you going to make it out of? What type of filament are you going to use? And that is type of thing is that where you're getting ready to do 3D printing 
is you can actually figure all those materials out because once you find the right filament, you don't want to just use any filament. You want to lock it and load it. I have some some of what I use down below that's reliable. You want to keep it nice and dry and understand this business because if you are going to have that financial freedom, you need to basically have these things locked and loaded. And there's learning curve for this. And they, you know, they say 10,000 hours is something that you should put into it. I'm thinking you basically cannot quit your job and then do this. You have to start ramping up and getting that knowledge. Understand drop shipping. You can find a company that will actually drop ship your product for you. That's really big. On demand's huge right now. So someone suggests that. I'm suggesting you don't do the one offs. I'm suggesting that you may consider drop shipping, but you really think about finding that product that you're passionate about that no one else is doing, or at least you get that little niche market that you can ride out before someone else copies you because that's really the reality of it. Like Etsy is a big, huge copycat market. Everyone's copying each other and it's important for you to find something in a Facebook group that's a niche. All right, hiring models and designers. You can do this and you can have them edit it, but you're going to lose some of your tight profit margins that already exist. I would rather have you start out with the product and license that product or buy out the model with copyright resale then I would have you hire a model. But it's good to develop a relationship. And what I would suggest is to go to Fiverr.com. That's F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Basically, it started out as a $5 website, and now you can hire someone to design a model for 40 bucks. All right. Now, when you actually get your model, you have to choose the right website. You know, you got Etsy and you got Squarespace and Shopify. You can really screw up on Etsy is if you don't deliver the product. They can put your store on permanent vacation mode. I suggest you using a regular website like Shopify or Squarespace and learning that. That's a whole other thing. With Etsy, you don't need that, but they could shut down your shop if you don't fulfill an order or if they don't believe that it's, it's a handmade product or something that's made. But again, I need to be straight up with you that Etsy is a big, it's really good for search, but it's a big copycat market. The next thing is selling your 3D models. Models. You come up with a model, you can sell your model. Now you're giving it away to the world so someone can just sell that model back over and pursuing someone with an attorney. I just don't think you're going to go after some small potato guy that old gal is going to be able to steal your model. So there is that risk. But at the same time, it is something that you have to consider. But if, do you really want to sell your model when you're really willing to fulfill that product and make that product? Because as soon as you put that model out there, anyone can make it. I would suggest putting your logo in the STL design and print it. And I show how to do that, how to take a logo and imprint it inside of a model so that when someone sells it, you know that it's yours. The next thing is understanding that the models aren't done after the 3D printing. You have to clean them up. You have to take sometimes a little brush. You have to remove them. Sometimes they're painted and you're going to have to post process those models and you're going to have to ship them. Once you do that enough and you start shipping it, you won't have to do that after a while. Two more really important things. Are patents worth it? I'm going to be straight up and say I don't believe they are um, when you are a small business to pursue someone that stole your idea in the United States is going to be a very hefty price tag if that, that happens. You can do a cease and desist and you can do a lot of other creative things um, and you can sue anyone for anything. So I'm not sure whether or not a patent is worth it, but a provisional patent is really inexpensive. Check out LegalZoom. Um, I've used those to form at my LLC, which I've currently had for 10 years. And that's the last point. For the cost of an LLC to separate the money, I remember I mentioned I, you don't want to be sued. To separate the money is really, really important. So if you do get in trouble, if someone chokes on a product or anything else, you've protected yourself. Make sure you put disclaimers and operate under that LLC and mention that in your listings. Anyways, I hope this helps. Whatever you do, make something that connects someone. Peace out. Have a great day.